And it was very good for me to see because you can see like this reflex, this mechanism of protecting the unit, protecting your body, you're protecting yourself is already there by fear. And she got a little bit scared that I may just run into them. So even though I was pretty far away from them, but then it was good. I needed to be reminded and see that even though I know these things, but you need life to just remind you again. And I saw, okay, she, she got scared. It's not from a precondition. It could be, but, but that's not really the case because it's already designed in us and it's a necessity to have fear. You, if you don't, you may not live very long. So fear is not really a bad thing. But since we don't understand these things, we don't understand how to deal with these things, and we haven't mastered our own mind, then what happens is your mind will take over and becomes your master. And that's what is going on with majority of people on the planet. 99.99% of the people on the planet don't have a clue, zero clue, zero idea, and zero interest to discover what's haunting them all of their lives. It's natural, it's completely okay and it's very natural to be afraid if a truck is r driving towards you and you're in the middle of the street, you're trying to cross the street and the truck is coming and it's aggressive and it's driving fast and it's coming towards you. Well, you need to jump out of the way and you're body reflex is going to be to preserve you, to get you out of the way. And that's not the fear I'm talking about. That's a necessity. Otherwise, you get killed. Or you get into a river of, or a stream or whatever, and the current is very strong, and, and you have doubts. So you're a little bit afraid to go in there because you don't know. Well, that's really good because you need that part of yourself to preserve you from early exit to the other side. So fear is really not your enemy, but since we don't have any kind of training Zero, no clue. Our parents didn't have a clue. Our school teachers didn't have a clue. Our spiritual teachers, whether you go to the church or mosque or synagogue or whatever, they didn't have a clue. So you don't know how to manage these things. And that's why we need to have a self-mastery training of mastering your mind. How you master it. Now, again, I need to, to make sure I'm clear about this, okay? Because a lot of people come and say, Oh yeah, Zaratustra, I've been controlling my thoughts or doing visualizing or trying to say the right things. I'm not saying that. Please don't come back and tell me this is what I did because this is what I heard you to, to say. I never say that. You didn't listen to me. You didn't hear it in the moment I was saying it. You just heard something else. To be the master of your mind doesn't mean you're going to control your thoughts. To think positively. That never works. It never worked and it never works. 
anybody who's doing it, they come to me and they have a headache and they're frustrated because they're trying to control something which is uncontrollable. It's impossible to control it. As if you try to control that the sun doesn't shine. And you're trying to find ways that the day doesn't come. So when it turns to be six, seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, the sun doesn't shine. It's impossible. You can't. It's beyond you. Same thing. You can't control your thoughts. You're wasting your time. You can't control your fear. It's a waste of time or any of your emotions. You're, you cannot control them. But you can observe them. You can decide when fear comes and when it goes. That's not in your control. If you could, you would have done it by now. And somebody else would have done it and they would have packaged it and they would have sold it to you and you would buy it and do it and you learn how, how to, to control it. But no one has ever been able to do it because it's impossible. So this is what we're trying to do. We're going, trying to learn to control our emotions. And we're spending a lot of time and energy trying to learn to do that. That doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. So why don't we try something else? We've tried that and it didn't work. So maybe the problem is some, somewhere else. Maybe the answer is somewhere else. Isn't that worth giving a try and try a different route? Since this one hasn't worked for past 60 years, maybe something else works. So, fear is something that's been ruling you. Anxiety comes. A lot of people right now these days dealing with anxiety, a lot of anxiety, worry, and then it turns to depression. And it's not if you're older. I hear this from a lot of young people. They're dealing with a lot of fear, worry, anxiety, and depression. I'm just like surprised hearing from it. From you know, an 18-year-old telling me these things, 25-year-old, 30-year-old, it's like, you know, it's just you're, you're not thinking they would be dealing with these kind of things in such an early stage of their lives, but they are. The more you are quiet, the more, again, it goes back to the fundamental practice. Be quiet. We went through this yesterday. Be silent. Practice being quiet. Practice being still. So you start implementing this practice in your life. And you do it religiously. Every day you're doing it. You're becoming attentive to this practice. And that's where I said, sacrifice everything for awareness but never compromise awareness for anything. Is that your commitment is to freedom. You want to free yourself from this slavery that you've been in, being a slave of your mind and your emotions, 